What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas, live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, coming to you live from Buffalo, New York. Great week for the show, as successful a week for the show as any, as my podcast is now available on so many other platforms, Spreaker.com, Spotify, Stitcher, um, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, it's everywhere. So if you type in the Thomas Take Sports Podcast in Google, it pops right up. It, it's it's instant access. So when people ask me, hey, Ryan, how can I follow your podcast? Literally just go to Google, type in the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, and you will find stuff. Guaranteed. But Spotify is where it's at. Anchor.fm is where it's at. Slash Thomas Take or download the Anchor app. That is where it's at as well. And I greatly appreciate love and support from the fans. I guess I got fans now because I've had people email me and say, hey, man, I'm a big fan. And I'm like, wow, I got fans. This is cool. I can I can I can, you know, dig this. I refer to them mostly as as listeners. But I guess you could say I got fans, which that's that's pretty cool. That being said. Let's shift gears here. We got some breaking news in the world of baseball. A day after Lorenzo Alexander joined my show, Buffalo Bills linebacker, captain, one of the best Bills players in recent memory, joined the show yesterday and said that you really need to build your team from from top to bottom. Make sure you have the right guys in the right room, whether it's the locker room, whether it's the clubhouse, whether... It's, you know, whether it's a trainer for a boxer or for an MMA fighter, you got to have the right guys around you in order to kind of put it all together and be who you want to be in your own way as a, as a player or a fighter or athlete. And the New York Yankees are a team that I often criticize, and it's, and it's obvious that I criticize them because I'm not a fan of them. But I'm a sports podcast guy. I have to look at things analytically. I have to look at things justifiably. And I post things on Facebook. I post things on Twitter. I post things everywhere, throwing out my sports opinions for other people to either agree or disagree with me on. That's what I do every day. And I love it. Whether they agree with me, whether they disagree with me, I love the interaction and I love the debate. And that's what I call it, the debate. Not arguments, debating, civil debating. When it gets personal... That's when I step out and, you know, say, bye, you're gone, see you, see you around. But I don't, I don't do that. I don't have to do that often. You know, I, I, you get rid of the bad seeds, you know, you know, who to, who to interact with and who not to interact with. So all that being said, you know, I've posted some things towards the Yankees that are a little bit um, critical, not a little bit, a lot of bit critical. And recently there was a post that I wrote in regards to the Yankees, you know, really being frustrated with the balls and strikes, uh, ball and strike calls that they were frustrated over. They lost this game fair and square to the Toronto Blue Jays. They left 12 runners in scoring position, and yet their manager, Aaron Boone, who really hasn't done much of anything to help the Yankees get to where they are today, is saying, well... We lost because of the calls. The calls were horrible. We would have won had the calls been our way. It's the hor- it's the worst message you could send to your team. You have to make your team feel like they could have done more in order to win that game. Now this team walks away from that loss to a mediocre at best divisional opponent in the Toronto Blue Jays. They walk away thinking that that was enough, that that was good enough to feel that way it was justifiable in their eyes to feel that way and and that is not okay for this Yankees team I look at the Yankees analytically and say they haven't won a World Series since 2009 that's an eternity for the New York Yankees that's an eternity 2009 since the first year of the house that George Steinbrenner built the new Yankee Stadium since then they've done nothing they haven't lasted in the playoffs. Two years ago, they took the eventual World Series champ Houston Astros to seven games. 
And the Yankees fans justify that and say, well, we took them to seven games. Maybe we would have won had we played the Dodgers. Man, I, I wish sports worked that way, but unfortunately it does not. You can only go off of what actually happened. The Yankees lost a series in seven games. That's like me as a Red Sox fan saying, well, if Aaron Boone didn't hit that home run off of Tim Wakefield, if Dust, if uh, Grady Little didn't pull Pedro Martinez, we would have won. I've never said that because it's just stupid. It makes no sense because that's not reality. That's not what happened. Grady Little did pull Pedro Martinez. Tim Wakefield did allow that walk-off home run to Aaron Boone, and the Red Sox went home, and the Yankees went on to lose that World Series to Florida. And Red Sox fans, some of them out there, said, well, what would have happened if we would have played the Marlins? Well, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. So move forward. Don't live in what-if land. I hate that. I'm not a fan of that. That's not what I like to do. I live in reality, and reality says... That since this century has begun, 2000 to 2019, only one team has been able to win four World Series titles, and that team is the Boston Red Sox. So if I'm putting on my GM hat, if I'm Brian Cashman, and I look at the Yankees and I say, here's what I want to do. I know we have. We have Aaron Judge, who is the premier power hitter in this game. Young power hitter, guy that can smash the ball opposite field, wherever he wants. Put the ball wherever he wants. We have that premier guy with the Bronx Bombers, and we have the premier player for that role within that position. That's a that's a great that's a great feeling to have a guy like that on your team. But how can we make that better? I decide we need to make that better. They decide we need to make that better. So this was an actual decision that the Yankees had to come to very recently that, hey, we have to make this better. They go out and they get this trade from the Miami the Miami Marlins for Giancarlo Stanton and decide to pay him $300 million to be their DH. Assume the money that was owed to him by the Miami Marlins and basically take on that contract because Miami could not afford it any longer because – Yes, they're the Miami Marlins. They, they're not the New York Yankees. So all that being said, you have a lot of guys that are needing to just be surrounded with talent in the, on this team too, not just Aaron Judge, but you have a really good all-around outfielder, I believe, in Aaron Hicks. I, I feel like a guy that is as, as underrated as any. Um, but then on the back end of that, you have a stupid contract that you paid to Jacoby Ellsbury for the hell of it, when, when you didn't really need Jacoby Ellsbury. You went out and overpaid him, and, and now they're paying the price for that, literally. Um, so with every good move that the Yankees have, or with every good player that the Yankees have, there's always just one dumb contract that's thrown in there, just one that makes no sense at all and one that hurts the team or one that maybe was too soon, was handed out too soon. Or too late. So you have this team that I look at and say, what do they need to be better? What do they need to have that team that can win a World Series? Every year, the, the, the purpose for the Yankees, I believe, is for them to win a World Series championship, just as it is for Boston and just as it is for any big budgeted team with passionate uh, sports fans, with guys that, um, you know, with fans galore you know as, as a part of as a part of that team part of that culture part of that city part of history that that is the yankees i i will acknowledge that with 100 percent certainty that they're the most historic franchise that there is in sports but all that being said you have a rotation that needs a lot of work you have a great bullpen but your bullpen is only as good as your rotation. If your rotation's not dominant, then your bullpen's really not cleaning up anything. If your rotation is bad, your bullpen is then overworked. Your bullpen is then overused, and it creates this massive mess for your starting pitching. So you have Masahiro Tanaka, who is inconsistent. You have CeCe Sabathia, who's probably 58 years old. Not necessarily, but you get the point. 
James Paxson was acquired in a trade with the Seattle Mariners. They traded they traded a Justice Sheffield, which was a very good trade for the Yankees at the time. You know, you you wonder is that a great trade? But the Yankees made a move that was very similar to the Boston Red Sox. That the Red Sox made uh, a move very similar to that a couple years prior for Chris Sale. Obviously, I'm not comparing Chris Sale to James Paxton, but both pretty good pitchers. Sale, I, I believe, far better. But you get the point that. The Yankees and the Red Sox gave up prospects, big prospects, for starting pitchers. And these are guys that are expected to take over and and be pivotal parts of their of their rotation for quite a long time. Then you have Luis Severino who has an injury, a bad injury. An injury that will probably put him out until after the All-Star break. Severino is a guy that I really like. Um, as far as his potential, I feel like he's got the potential to be a very good pitcher over the course of his career. But only time will tell if if he can't stay healthy. You're only as good as as your health says you are. You know, if if you can't stay healthy, then then you're literally no good. Um, there, there's really no point to saying how great someone is when they're not even out there on the diamond playing. Sixty day DL. For Luis Severino, who's who's twenty five, um, and is a guy that definitely will will bounce back and and get back on the horse and do his thing. But you have pieces on this team as well that lead people to believe that these are some of the best pieces that you could have at these particular positions. Gary Sanchez, for my money, is one of the better catchers offensively in the league, but defensively there's some things that need work on, and then offensively too there's. There's a little bit of a, I think, a short fuse with Gary Sanchez that you can't just make that go away. You know that that's that's a personality trait that uh, some some players can can move past, and other players just cannot turn that off. You have guys that really have massive potential in Glaber Torres and Gio Urshela, whose contract was purchased by the Yankees from the Toronto Blue Jays. He's been a, a very fine player, especially given the fact that Miguel Andujar was their third baseman last year, and he had a breakout campaign, but he's on the IL as well, and Gio Urshela takes that spot over like nothing. I think eventually the the performance will taper off, but you got to be happy with the results so far. But what is it that leads me to believe that the Yankees will not win the World Series. And it all stems from one simple concept, and it is that the Yankees have all the talent to win the World Series. They just have the wrong guy managing that talent. I was not a fan of New York's decision to deviate away from Joe Girardi. I liked Joe Girardi I didn't want to like Joe Girardi, but I think Joe Girardi is a pretty knowledgeable baseball guy. I feel like Joe Girardi had been through the ringer as the manager while winning a World Series, mind you, with the New York Yankees, that he didn't deserve to be casted out. I will also throw you this again, which I've already said once before during this show, but I'll throw it out out to you again that Joe Girardi led the Yankees to a seven-game series versus the Houston Astros, the young Yankees at that time, Judge bursting onto the scene without Giancarlo Stanton on that roster. Then you add in Giancarlo Stanton. The Yankees sometimes always think that if we take this one great player and we add another one for a lot of money, it's going to work. They failed with it once. They're failing with it now. The last time they did this was with Derek Jeter and A-Rod. They bring in A-Rod to to pair with Jeter. It did not work. Their personalities were not the same. Their personality traits are two polar opposites. Derek Jeter, the selfless leader. A-Rod, the selfish douche. Everyone knows that. Even people that don't even watch baseball know that A-Rod is is a little bit of a douche. So (laughs) why would they go back to the well and do this again when you have Aaron Judge, leader, uh, young, uh, flashy, swagger, and then you add Giancarlo Stanton, who is as injury-prone as any player 
and he's al- he always has been. Really, the healthiest year of his career was that year prior to the Yankees giving him this massive, you know, beyond understanding contract, which it wasn't a contract that they gave. It was a contract that Miami gave, but it was a contract that the Yankees uh, absorbed. Giancarlo Stanton right now um, is 29 years old. He's got quite a few years left on that contract that the Yankees can't just turn their back on. It would have to take a truly desperate team to believe that Giancarlo Stanton is the guy to help change their entire fortunes around. And how can they believe that now when Giancarlo Stanton can't even last you know, a few months into the season? A few months into any season as he's been hurt time and time again. But you're paying this guy. 26 million the next two seasons, 29 million this season after that, um, 29 million this season after that, 32, 32, 32, 29, 25, and then uh, 25. So, what's very interesting about Giancarlo Stanton's contract, and I look at this on spottrack.com, he's in his second season with this new contract with the Yankees that, that was essentially um, signed by the Miami Marlins, uh, in 2017, they decided to give him a contract that would allow him to be paid $25 million in 2018 as a, as a 28-year-old. Nineteen In 2019, this current season, he would make $26 million. Next year, he'd make $26 million. Then, from age 31 to 37, he would have player options. So at any point in this contract, Giancarlo Stanton can say, hey, I'm not making enough money. Pay me more money. Which right now, the leverage is on the Yankees side. Giancarlo Stanton is not going to say that because once again, he's not playing. So he can't demand more money when you're not playing. Um, So let's just say Giancarlo Stanton next year does play and has this banner year that he had with the Miami Marlins a couple years back. Then he could say, well, I want more money. And that's when the Yankees could say, thank God. Or this is what the Yankees should say. They should say, thank God you want more money. Well, we're going to let you go. Well, to my knowledge, it doesn't work like that either. Because if he signed for a year, the player option can say that he wants to get paid more money or he walks. So... It's it's a tricky situation, and it was a situation that the Yankees did not need. And I will throw this out there. I was very wrong about the probability of the Yankees doing better or worse with Giancarlo Stanton. When the Yankees went out and they made this trade for Giancarlo Stanton, I was so ticked off. I was pissed, as a matter of fact, because Giancarlo Stanton, when healthy, is one of the best power hitters in the game. But... As I said, when healthy. If he's not healthy, then, as I said, what good is he? Um, I thought it was ridiculous, the trade that they made, where it was basically just a salary dump, where because the fact the Yankees are the Yankees and the Miami Marlins are the Miami Marlins and the Miami Marlins are run day-to-day by Derek Jeter, the probably the most famous Yankee uh, in this, you know, in this century ever, um, definitely the most famous in this century ever. It, it it was very odd, very suspicious, very well. Is he just giving them Giancarlo Stanton? Y- yeah, he he is. And meanwhile, the Yankees give the uh, the the Yankees give the Marlins Starlin Castro. I mean, come on, really? So. I think that decision will hold the Yankees back for so many years because Stanton is a boomer bust player heading into the back end of his career. As I said, he's 29. You, you're not out of your prime at 29, but you're definitely not in your prime. You're about to enter the, the, end, the back end of your prime, 30, 31, 32, for a DH to be playing those three years and to get the money that he had that he's going to get his body is broken down already how many years left does this guy really have i i couldn't tell you 
I think it's that, and I also think it's the fact that when they lose, they cannot accept it. It's as if it's, it's them versus everybody else. They can't say to themselves, well, we didn't do that right. We weren't where we needed to be. We made bad plays. We did a lot of things that we shouldn't have done. And it's like, why can't you just say that? Why does it have to be, well, this happened to us and we were screwed and this wasn't fair. It, it's it's laughable, really. And you see the teams that have been running very well, the Red Sox, the Astros, the Indians. Those are the teams in the AO that have, and even the Twins this year. The Twins this year have been phenomenal. I, I, they're a sleeper team without a doubt. You don't see those things when they lose. You don't see their managers making their, those excuses. And as I said, put me in there. I'm not a Yankees fan, but you could pay me, you know, let's just say 50 grand for the season to be the manager of the New York Yankees. Let me wear those stupid puffy jackets that make these guys look like they're all 78 years old when they're not. And the guys that are 78 years old look like they're 178 years old when they're not. Let me wear one of those stupid puffy jackets and I could do a better job than Aaron Boone. I guarantee it. Because Aaron Boone is just sitting there chewing his gum, spitting his dip, and just watching this talent do all the work for him. And that is why the bullpen has been so... I I believe that the Yankees have loaded their bullpen so much because... They want it to be manager-proof. They don't want Aaron Boone to make a mistake when it comes down to putting the right reliever in, the right closer in. They, they need it to be so good that no matter who they put in, righty-lefty, lefty-righty matchup, trying to get those matchups pitcher and hitter, lefty-lefty, righty-righty, however they want to do it, they know that they have the best relief pitching in the sport, which I think they do. I really do. I, I Aroldis Chapman's the flamethrower. Adam Adovino, Zach Britton, um, Dylan Batansis is streaky, but he's still Dylan Batansis. He's he's got experience and years under his belt. I think the Yankees bullpen is as good as any. I would give them that, but you don't have the right guy managing it. So what good is it when the rotation sucks? Today there was a player by the name of Dallas Keuchel that went to the Atlanta Braves. If I was the New York Yankees, post Keuchel not being eligible for the the draft compensation um, where the Yankees would have had to give up a draft pick, post that deadline, June 1st, June 2nd, I would have been on the phone with his agent saying, let's bring this dude in. We need this guy. Because what they have is not enough. Jay Happ is not going to get it done. That's not going to get it done against the Houston Astros. And I'm not trying to throw shade at J.A. Happ, but I'd I'd like to have Dallas Keuchel in the rotation. I'd like to have him around. I feel like that makes sense. I truly believe that if this continues the way it's going, the Yankees won't win it this year. At this rate, the way it's going, something would have to change drastically for the Yankees to get to where they want to be. Giancarlo Stanton would have to come back. And, and this is how I see it. If if the Yankees do go and win a World Series this year, we'll just play devil's advocate for just for the fun of it. If the Yankees do go out and they win a World Series this year, it's due to the fact that Aaron Judge and Clint Frazier and... Giancarlo Stanton and all the big bats all produce at the same time because that's what it's going to have to take for the Yankees to get to where they want to be of winning a World Series championship because the pitching's not going to do it for them. And you know this as well as I do. The only thing that matters in October is pitching. Pitching wins in the postseason. It always has. It always will. Yeah, you will have your clutch bats swing and hit a ball over the fence every once in a blue moon, every you know series or game or so. You, you got to score runs for sure. But their lineup is what it is. Their lineup takes care of itself. The pitching needs to step up. The pitching needs to be immaculate. And it won't be 
if their pitching consists of who they currently have. Right now, they're sitting atop the division. Um, Blue Jays are about a game and a half out, two and a half games out maybe. Red Sox are about six and a half games out. It's June. We're still in the first half of the season. Then there's the All-Star break. The All-Star break every year makes or breaks a team. The standings could be completely different. The Red Sox could be in first. The Yankees could be in second. The Rays could be in third. The Rays could be in first. The Red Sox could be in second. The Yankees could be in third by season's end. There's a lot of different ways that this can go based on how much there is left during this season. And based on the fact that, yep, the trade deadline brings in different players to different teams and the All-Star break makes or breaks a team. The Minnesota Twins could go 42-19 and 19. right now. All-star break happens. They might go into the crapper and, and finish, you know, 68 and, you know, 90-something. You never know. Baseball's baseball. It's a weird sport. It's tough to predict. But if I were to give a prediction and say, based on how things are going right now with Stanton, with these overachieving no-name players, you know at some point it's going to taper off. Baseball's too tough of a game for someone to, t- to stay statistically great, unless you're talking about a Mike Trout or a Mookie Betts or an Nolan Arenado or some of the better players in this game, Gio Urshela, is not going to maintain this pace. It's just not going to happen. He's too new. He's too green. That's why he's doing as well as he's doing now because the pitchers have not figured him out yet. Once they do, his production will dip. And that's just how I see it. I'm not saying this just because I'm a Red Sox fan or anything like that. I think the Yankees could win a World Series within these next couple years. They have the talent to do it. They just don't have the right guy managing that talent. Join the takeover, everybody. Follow me on Twitter at Ryan Thomas Take. Follow me on Instagram as well at Ryan Thomas Take. Enjoy the rest of your night. We'll see if I'm wrong. Only time will tell.